Hello everyone, this is Mikey and today we'll talk about how paracetamol is discovered. So, ang paracetamol laging binibili yan over the counter kasi napakamura and readily available siya in tablet form. So, ngayon pag-uusapan natin kung paano nga ba siya na-discover. Well, during the ancient times, uh, ang mga antipyretic dati came in natural sources. So, uh, we have yung white willow bark, doon nang gagaling ang salicin, and yung ating cinchona bark, kung saan nang gagaling ang quinine. Ang willow bark, doon na kuha ang acetyl salicylic acid or commonly known as aspirin. And yung cinchona naman, doon na kuha ang quinine, yung famous na anti-malarial drug, which has also antipyretic properties. Yun nga lang, when cinchona got scarce noong 1880s, people began looking for alternatives kasi syempre paubos na eh. So they had to look for alternatives. Well, the two alternatives that I was talking about were first, acetanilide, which was synthesized no 1886, and phenacetin, na synthesized no 1887. For acetanilide, it is the first aniline derivative serendipitously by chance that is found to possess antipyretic properties and quickly introduced into medical practice under the brand name Antifebrin by Can and Hep. Yun nga lang, yung side effects niya were very toxic. One of them was methemoglobinemia, which led to people or scientists search for far lesser toxic compounds. In 1877 or 78, an American chemist named Harman Northrop Morse uh, first synthesized paracetamol via reduction of the P-nitrophenol with tin in glacial acetic acid at John Hopkins University. In 1887, a clinical pharmacologist named Joseph Von Mehring tried this paracetamol in humans. This Von Mehring published a paper reporting all the results uh, with paracetamol. Kasi nga, diba, trinay niya yung paracetamol with phenacetin. Pero, he claimed that unlike phenacetin, paracetamol daw had a light tendency of producing methemoglobinemia. Kaya ang nangyari, tinanggal si paracetamol sa market. In 1899 naman, paracetamol was discovered to be the metabolite of acetanilide. Yun nga lang, scientists largely disregard this discovery. While Von Mehring's claim na si paracetamol daw ay nagkukos ng methemoglobinemia stayed unquestioned for almost half a century. Now, fast forward tayo. In 1947, David Lester and Leon Greenberg found evidence that paracetamol was a major metabolite of acetanilide in blood. And subsequent studies show that at large doses of this paracetamol, when introduced to albino rats, did not cause any methemoglobinemia. The following year, 1948, scientists Bernard Brody and Julius Axelrod linked acetanilide with methemoglobinemia and determined that the analgesic effect of acetanilide was primarily because of its active metabolite, paracetamol. Together with Frederick Blinn, they conducted series of experiments para mapatunayan na si paracetamol ay hindi nagkukos ng methemoglobinemia. And they also discovered that paracetamol was just as efficacious as its precursor. So, si acetanilide and si paracetamol works just the same. Effective, pero lesser toxic si paracetamol. Well, they also suggested that methemoglobinemia is produced in human primarily because of another metabolite, which is phenylhydroxylamine. A follow-up paper by Brody and Axelrod in 1949 suggested that phenacetin was metabolized to paracetamol, which led to a rediscovery of paracetamol. It has also been suggested that contamination of paracetamol by 4-aminophenol, which Von Mehring used for his experiments, caused his spurious findings. So, yung 4-aminophenol daw na ginamit siya para masynthesize si paracetamol, yun yung nagkakos ng methemoglobinemia. 
since they find out or they found out that paracetamol was effective and safe, they marketed it in 1950 under the brand name Triagesic together with aspirin and caffeine. Well, in 1951, three users claimed to be stricken with disease after taking triagesic. The disease that they said is a granulocytosis, a blood disease. Ngayon, ang nangyari, since meron yung side effect na ganun, we need to draw si triagesic sa market, which led it to become, parang ang tagal nilang napatunayan na hindi pala related si triagesic doon sa agranulocytosis na naranasan noong tatlong gumamit. The company Sterling and Winthrop uh, first marketed paracetamol under the brand name, yung paracetamol lang ha, itself lang. Paracetamol under the brand name Panadol. Ngayon, I'm sure some of you familiar na kayo sa brand na Panadol. That was on 1953. It was preferable than aspirin kasi hindi siya nakakakos ng stomach upset. So, GI disorders. So, mga GI distress. Hindi siya nakakakos ng GI distress. And it's also safe to use para sa mga bata. In 1955, Paracetamol was marketed as Children's Tylenol Elixir by McNeil Laboratories. In 1956, 500 milligrams of paracetamol was marketed in the United Kingdom by Friedrich Stern and Company, a subsidiary of Sterling Drug, under the brand name of Panadol. Since na subsidiary nga siya ng Sterling rin, kaya they adapted the same name. So yun yung first na 500 milligrams na paracetamol na alam natin ngayon. Whilst in 1958, Panadol Elixir was released. 1963, sa wakas, na na si paracetamol sa British Pharmacopeia. Yun nga lang, concerns about the safety of paracetamol was still widely unaccepted. So, na-delay yung acceptance ni paracetamol up to the 1970s. But, noong 1980s, na-surpass na ni paracetamol yung sales ni aspirin. And remember phenacetin? Yun din, followed by yung pagtaas ng sales ng paracetamol, yun yun naman yung demise or demise ng phenacetin. Since nakita nga nila na si phenacetin ay nagkakos ng analgesic nephropathy or kidney damage and blood toxicity. So since 1959, paracetamol is available as an over-the-counter drug. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something today and if you want to see more of drug literatures or drug histories, drug discoveries, please subscribe to my YouTube channel that's Ask Pharmacist Mikey Vlogs and turn on the notifications para ma-update kayo kung meron ako mga bagong videos. And if you want to suggest something or may gusto kayong drug na gusto alam yung history, please comment it below. And that's all everyone. I want you to stay safe, stay at home, and stay healthy. Wash your hands, wear your mask, and wag na kayo lalabas ng bahay and always follow the community protocols that's all everyone goodbye